financial institutions is now called it to order. Today, we will tackle a measure which will address the growing complexity of financial transactions, as well as support the accelerated financial inclusion in the country. Digital financial transactions proliferated so much during the pandemic that it spawned a whole new dictionary of financial jargon. Instapay, Pesonet, Gcash, Paymongo, Paymaya, uh, Shopee Pay, Grab Pay, Send via QR, and a slew of other terms used in payments and bank transfers. The proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act, or FCPA, has become even more necessary in the new normal where we see the number of bank Filipino adults reached as high as 53% during the first quarter of 2021, compared to just 29% in 2019. The goal of hitting 70% in 2023 now seems doable as more and more Filipinos open bank accounts or utilize e-money accounts. Expansion comes with its own range of challenges, from the small-scale fraud and investment scams to the hacking of one of the largest banks in the Philippines, which left at least 700 accounts compromised. Yung perang iniipon at pinagpaguran, bigla na lang nawala. The increase of financial inclusion resulted in a marked increase in incidents of financial fraud and scams. In the analysis made by the credit reporting company TransUnion, as of March 2021, 44% of Philippine consumers have been targeted by digital fraud, while um, fraud attempts against businesses rose up to 31% when comparing pre-pandemic to pandemic levels. The Securities and Exchange Commission has likewise published at least 127 warnings against investment scams in 2020, nearly doubled the number of 2019. Banking fraud losses also climbed to at least 1 billion pesos in 2021, with losses stemming from unauthorized withdrawals and branch transfers. Thus, the need for the law that lists all rights of financial consumers. These are your ordinary depositors, consumers, policy holders to protect their interests. This law shall also ensure that our financial service providers are operating optimally and the regulators are able to oversee the system with utmost efficiency. Taking into consideration the House version and those authored by Senators Lapid, Subiri, Angara, Revilla, Jr., Dachalian, and this representation, we hope that a law on consumer rights will inspire more confidence in our financial system and encourage more Filipinos to be part of it. I'm not sure if I have any senators uh, present yet at this time. Um, uh, Secretary? Mr. Madam Chair, it's Aimee. Oh, yes. Uh, I would like to recognize Senator Aimee Marcos. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for your presence here today. Um, and yes, I, would I just have a, if, if I would be allowed just to make a very quick comment. Uh, yes, go ahead, ma'am, before I recognize our other resource persons. Go ahead, please. Yes, firstly, if I may uh, extend my full support to uh, the proposed Financial Consumer Act in their different permutations and the various bills that have been filed together with the BSP, we are alarmed by the proliferation of uh, these new uh, crimes, as it were, and violations, uh, as well as the victimization of so many of our borrowers and uh, bank clients. Um, secondly, in addition to this report and my urgent request that I be made a co-author, may I also uh, request information regarding the 20,000 or so complaints received by the BSP Consumer Protection and Market Conduct Office. Ano po ang nangyari dito? Anong breakdown nito? Uh, anong mga uri ng violation at uh, pinaka-common, ika nga, na complaints? ng ating mga consumers nung nakaraang taon ng 2020 for which I have the data and the status of said complaints. Yun lang po. Thank you very much at uh, 
talagang naaalarma tayo sa mga sunod-sunod na balita na na violate ikanga yung security ng ating mga banko. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Marcos. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of our majority leader, Senator Mig Subiri, as well as uh, Sir, uh, Senator Sherwin Gatchalian. Um, Senator Marcos, uh, do you mind if we, uh, I think you have another hearing coming up, right? Would you like them to give you a brief answer before we acknowledge our other resource persons and the rest yes, to follow exactly. later on? Thank you very much for the indulgent chairwoman. Yes. Uh, ano na nangyari dun sa napakalaming complaints? Nakakaalarma kasi yung 20,000. Um, who would you like to answer this? Is it um I think uh, this uh, should rightly be answered by the uh, group in the BSP, the Consumer Protection uh, Market Desk. Um, we have, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, Governor Diokno. Thank you, sir, for your presence this morning. Um, would you like to answer that or would you like uh, one of your... Um, could, could you one, answer one, that, uh, attorney? I may, yes, may ask that attorney sufficient here. Attorney, uh, attorney De Vera be recognized, uh, Your Honor. Okay, Attorney De Vera. Yes. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Are you for the Consumer Protection? Yes, I'm, from, I'm Attorney Cha from the Consumer Protection and Market Conduct Group. So we Go received, ahead, please. Yes, so we received around 23,000 complaints from the public. So these are merely those escalated to the Consumer Protection and Market Conduct Office. So a majority of these complaints are on deposits and then followed by um, credit card and then uh, lending. Those are the types of complaints received in 2020. So um, based on our data, majority of these uh, complaints are resolved, but then um, there are also some which are resolved but unfavorable to the complainants. So th that's what happened to the complaints, po, which were escalated to the BSP. Okay, uh, if I may, um, in what way will the new bill uh, assist and reinforce financial protection of the consumers? Uh, okay na ba yung uh, nakalahat sa ating iba't ibang mga bills or uh, attorney, should we add other things that would help us and uh, you to enforce the law better? Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Aini. Um, the bill, the proposed FCP bill would actually reinforce the, the adjudication power of the financial regulators because currently, what we have is um, the mm -hmm. Consumer Protection Act, which is usually yes. for the consumer goods. But That's no right. stand, yes, but there is no standalone Financial Consumer Protection Act here in the Philippines, which is actually being practiced already in other jurisdictions. So, with this uh, FCP bill, um, the regulators will be given, among others, additional adjudication power and also um, market conduct and surveillance powers, and also uh, rulemaking powers, which could include the restriction of um, imposition of excessive fines or fees or charges. So this will actually provide consumers, financial consumers, an additional level of redress mechanism, especially for those um, victims of financial crimes or the cyber, secu cyber security related crimes. Because right now what we can offer is only mediation. We do not adjudicate on um, cases elevated to us. Yes, um, we're in perfect agreement with the BSP and certainly even the World Bank has observed that the BSP does not have an explicit mandate in relation to consumer protection in financial transactions. As a result, while, our, while there are widespread efforts in encouraging transparency and good business conduct, uh, they do not apply consistently to similar products and services. And there is a vacuum as well as mentioned by the BSP in the area of adjudication, it's merely mediation. So uh, the report 
mechanisms for consumers are incomplete. So let's keep that in mind in the final drafting through the TWG, in as much as there are more than one bill um, already being discussed. Thank you very much, Madam Chairwoman, Governor Jokno, and the rest of the DSP. Um, thank you, Senator Marcos. In fact, uh, just to add to um, your query, there is actually the, the most salient part here is giving the central bank uh, an adjudication power, a quasi-judicial a quasi function, so that they don't have to, 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 to go to the courts or those that are um, having any redress or problems don't have to go through the lengthy um, process of going through the courts. Instead, the central bank can adjudicate. And there are other government agencies that have that function. And I think that, especially now, we need to have a dedicated uh, court, if you may, or uh, a central bank arm that will deal with these consumers. Um, I think now uh, I would like to ask, unless uh, Senator Zubiri has an opening and Senator Gachalian, we will now acknowledge the present um, resource person. Senator Zubiri, would you like to yes. have an opening? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Just a short opening. Uh, first of all, good morning to all my colleagues, Senator Aimee, uh, Senator Sherwin, to our uh, chairperson, Madam Grace, and of course to Governor Ben. Uh, congratulations to winning the award as uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, central bank governor. Uh, sir, congratulations. Thank you, Mitch. Good to see you, sir. I still owe you a trip to Bukidnon. <laughs> and uh, of course, to all the other resource persons that are here. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, first of all, I'm here to support my bill on providing protection for financial consumers and for other purposes. This technological driven global age has drastically altered our methods of consumption, making it possible for anyone to purchase products with a single click. These days, it seems to exist is to consume and to consume at an instant. Mobile applications have increasingly become part and parcel of everyone's daily lives as they provided or provide practical intermediary services for food, transport, rental, and shopping needs, among others. Especially now during this time of the pandemic, uh, Madam Chair. Even underage persons with no stream of income can make extravagant online purchases through easily accessible applications that promise staggered payment schemes. Indeed, many companies have taken advantage of this lightly regulated global market and have, uh, uh, and have preyed on vulnerable individuals to lure them into debt-making traps. Honest people save up their hard-earned money not uh, only to get duped, rather, by dishonest financial investment entities in the end. To protect the interests of these consumers, it's, time, it's now time to strengthen the state's regulatory powers in the financial service arena. To this end, the bill seeks to invest rulemaking, surveillance, inspection, market monitoring, and enforcement powers of the nation's financial regulators, namely the Banco Central of the Philippines, the Security and Exchange Commission, the Insurance Commission, and the Cooperative De Development Authority shall be granted such powers as well in order to oversee the financial services of the cooperative sector and all the other sectors I mentioned earlier. With a body of financial regulators wielding strengthened and expanded regulatory powers as they uphold fair market practices, consumers are certainly are certain rather to enjoy financially safe and non-exploitative exploitative transactions as it as is their right. And um, therefore, Madam Chair, I ask my colleagues and our and our resource persons to support this measure. I know many, many friends, Madam Chair, who have uh, who've had uh, fallen prey to these scams online. Uh, our phones, uh, it slowed down the past uh, uh, week or so, but two to three weeks ago and uh, prior to the Christmas holidays, we would get uh, uh, financial packages from people we have no clue, uh, no, no clue of who these people are would uh, flood our phones with these messages. Hopefully with, these, uh, with this law, we'll be able to come up with a regulatory framework to, first of all, secure our consumers, uh, of course, uh, be able to come up with a safe uh, and uh, certified transaction that these uh, transactions are actually legitimate and not scams. Because as I said, 
many of my friends have fallen prey to these scams and um, the penalties thereafter if they are scams um, and not following uh, our laws. So yun lang po, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat. And um, I fully support this measure. And, and thank you to my dear colleagues and our, co and our uh, resource persons for listening. Thank you, Paul. Thank you to our Majority Leader. Um, Senator Gachalian, would you like to have a brief opening? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And likewise, I'd like to uh, congratulate Governor Ben Jokno for winning the uh, best central banker of the world. Ma. of the Philippines, not of Asia, but of the world. And this is the first for our country. So congratulations, Governor Ben. And, thank you, uh, Senator Wayne. And... Uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much for hearing this bill. It's really about time that we uh, uh, put a stronger financial protection bill for our financial consumers. It has accelerated the use of financial services, the use of electronic payments, the use of digital payments, uh, not only in, in, in different parts of the world, but here in our country. And uh, I myself was a victim, Madam Chair, of uh, uh, fraud. Um, uh, last year, uh, a million pesos was taken out of my credit card uh, by um, uh, by a certain individuals, and I would like to thank the NBI for uh, doing a good job in apprehending uh, the perpetrator. And that goes to show that uh, the hackers, uh, the fraudsters, are getting very sophisticated. In fact, uh, just a few months back, uh, certain hackers also hacked. Uh, bank accounts of BDO clients, transferring it to Union Bank, uh, uh, to Union Bank, and uh, this is another case that we can see that uh, hackers are becoming very uh, emboldened and sophisticated in terms of targeting our financial consumers. So it's about time to put this in place so that uh, our promotion of digital payments, uh, financial uh, digital financial payments, will be more robust and consumer confidence will increase uh, after. So thank you very much, Madam Chair, and uh, good morning to all. I, I, that's good news that they were able to apprehend uh, the one that hacked into your account, uh, Senator Wynn. Um, now I would like to request the Secretariat to please acknowledge our guests. Good morning, Your Honor. The committee recognizes the virtual presence of the following resource persons. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Governor Dr. Benjamin Jokno, together with Director Charina De Vera Yap, Attorney Katrina Anti Limbonhai Aldon, Attorney Rachel B. Barbosa Salva, Attorney Rowena C. Figueroa, and Director Melchor Labasan. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, Commissioner Efairo Luis D. Amato, Attorney Romwald C. Padilla, General Counsel, Director Vicente Graciano P. Felizmieno, Director Rachel G. Gumtang Remalaante, Oliver O. Leonardo, Officer in Charge, Assistant Director Emma A. Valencia, Attorney Algin M. La Canaria, Attorney Anne Kathleen Gaddula, Attorney Gail Rose Anne Egar, Attorney Avriel Bries, Attorney Desiree Amor Franco. From the Insurance Commission, Deputy Commissioner Ferdinand Florento, Ms. Lourdes Ramos, Mr. Nino Cruz, and Attorney Gwen Marquez. From the Cooperative Development Authority, Assistant Secretary Vidal Villanueva. From the Philippine Stock Exchange, uh, Mr. Ramon S. Monzon, President and CEO, Attorney Rubel A. Refran, Chief Operating Officer, Attorney Veronica Del Rosario, PSE General Counsel, and Attorney Marigel B. Garcia. From the Chamber of Thrift Banks, Mr. Cecilio San Pedro, President, together with Suzanne Felix, Executive Director. From the Philippine Investment Funds Association, Incorporated, uh, Chairperson is Karen Lisa M. Roa, together with 
uh, their president, Mr. Gerald L. Bautista, and Dino Makasaid, Chief Official Representative. From the Philippine Insurer and Reinsurers Association, Executive Director Michael F. Reliosa, together with PIRA Secretariat, Mr. Herorio, Gregorio Barrios. From the Philippine Life Insurance Association, Attorney Jemeline Camania, PLIA Legal and Legislative Committee member. From the Philippine Association of HMO Organization Companies, Inc., um, Mr. Christian Argos, President, together with Chief with uh, Mr. Joseph Reyes, Chief Audit and Compliance Officer, MaxiCare Healthcare Corporation. From the Bankers Association of the Philippines, Benjamin P. Castillo, Managing Director, and Arnel N. Almaden, Associate Director. From the Philippine Chamber of Mutual Benefits Association, Annaline B. Manuel, General Manager, and from Laban Consumer Incorporated, Attorney Victorio Mario Di Magiba, President. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you to our Secretariat. Uh, perhaps we can um, ask if the Banco Central has a presentation. Are, are you supportive of this bill and um, do you have a presentation this morning? Uh, I'll just make an opening statement. Uh... Madam Chairman. Yes, go ahead, Governor. Okay, Senator Grace Liamanzares Poe, Chairperson of the Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies, Senators and members of the committee, fellow public servants from the Cooperative Development Authority, Insurance Commission, Securities and Exchange Commission, and other concerned agencies and stakeholders, good morning. We thank you for your support to the Banco Central ng Pilipinas initiatives, including the Financial Consumer Protection Act or the FCP Act. We likewise thank the senators who fought the version of the FCP Act and to all market players who continue to support this priority legislative measure. The FCP Act will protect every Juan and Maria making financial transactions, whether it is making deposits to save for their children's education, taking a loan to grow their businesses, sending money to friends and family, or paying goods online. The act will benefit us all because we are all financial consumers. Without this act, we will continue to hear stories like Johnny's, a father of two young children and economic frontliner who lost his hard earned savings after a fraudster obtained his account information and made unauthorized fund transfers. Or Marians, a small business owner who was built with an increased amortization on her loan account. She disputed a reasonableness of the fees and charges but lost to the financial institution in the end. These are real stories. They are based on actual complaints that BSP received. In fact, these two cases were among the 42,456 complaints. Let me repeat that, 42,456 complaints elevated to the BSP Consumer Assistance Mechanism for 2020 and 2021. Declared amounts in the complaints received in 2021 alone add up to about 540 million pesos. From 2019 to 2021, the cumulative total amounted to 2 billion pesos. A majority of these cases have been deemed closed, but the process was long and arduous. And for many complaints, the resolutions were unfavorable to the consumer. Over the same period, fellow regulators, the Insurance Commission, received and processed 2,992 complaints against insurance and pre companies and HMOs. 
The Securities and Exchange Commission also received hundreds of investment scam complaints within 2019 and 2020. These cases could be resolved quickly once the FCP Act is in place. This act will empower financial regulators such as BSP, the Insurance Commission, the SEC, and the Cooperative Development Authority to expedite the adjudication of reasonable monetary claims more efficiently, fairly, and openly, all to the benefit of the consumers. One of the positive unintended consequences of the COVID pandemic has been the dramatic rise in the use of digital financial services. But the surge brought with it graver risk. In fact, complaints related to the use of internet banking and mobile banking account account for 45.2% of the total complaints in 2021. Hackers and scammers took advantage of the digital infrastructure and consumer vulnerability to perpetrate crime. And based on BSP monitoring, the increased use by the public of digital financial services has given rise to a wave of cyber and financial crimes. In 2020, hacking and other malware attacks surged by a whopping 2,324% from the previous year, while phishing and other social engineering schemes increased 302% from 2019. Over the same period, account takeover or identity theft rose 2.5%, while card not present fraud fell 26.8%. Taken together, the top three cyber crimes in 2020 were first, account takeover or identity theft, second, phishing and other social engineering schemes, and third, card not present fraud. Notably, scheming and ATM-based cyber fraud losses significantly declined from 2018 to 2021 due to the implementation of the EMV chip technology, but fraud actors were quick to shift their tactics. Clearly, all of us as financial consumers are exposed to various risks, frauds, and cyber threats that could result in loss of income. Worse, it could result in loss of confidence in the financial system. And should there be a loss of confidence in the financial system, consumers might opt to keep the savings and investments away from the formal financial system, thus undermining the financial system's ability to intermediate and facilitate the flow of funds to productive sectors of the economy. The enactment of this act is envisioned to provide an armor of protection to all financial consumers. It will ensure that relevant government institutions and financial regulators will be fully equipped with a legal authority to enforce prudent, responsible, and customer-centric standards of business conduct. The passage of this act will enable financial regulators to sanction business practices and entities that pose grave and irreparable injury to financial consumers. It will deter frauds and scams and ensure that every Juan and Maria are provided with positive customer experiences. Now, let me talk about the salient features of the FCP Act. The Act covers the full range of financial products and services offered by the banking, insurance, payments, and fintech industries. Even investment advisory services are covered. Aligned with international standards, the Act strengthens the oversight and enforcement powers of financial regulators to address current weaknesses of existing laws, rules, and regulations. The Act grants regulators with authority to determine the reasonableness of fees and charges, suspend erring employees, revoke licenses of erring financial institutions, and impose sanctions to ensure compliance 
with the intent of its provisions. More importantly, the Act provides financial consumers with new, immediate, and efficient avenues for redress by granting financial regulators with adjudicatory power authority to conduct hearings on consumer complaints. This proposed measure provides alternate, less cumbersome legal recourse for financial consumers. Consumer complaints can be escalated and resolved at the level of the financial regulators, ensuring quick resolutions, hence declogging court dockets. Existing courts may then focus on more pressing matters. The passage of the FCP Act is not only a matter of necessity, it is an issue of urgency. As mentioned earlier, as financial products and services continue to rise, so do risk. And we, policymakers, cannot stand idly by while the Hawans and Marias continue to suffer from the limitations of our existing laws. Without doubt, if properly and swiftly implemented, this act will reinforce the trust and confidence of the public in the financial system and in the government's ability to uphold consumer welfare. We look forward to this committee's and the Senate's full and continued support for the enactment of the Financial Consumer Protection Act as a priority measure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Joplo. Indeed, um, the law that we're trying to, uh, to analyze now, or the bill that we're analyzing, is actually trying to keep up with the times as the banking sector um, expands. Definitely, you are correct. The risk is also increasing, so we have to be able to mitigate that. Um, I would like now to ask the SEC. I think you have a, an opening statement as well. Yes. Thank, you very much. Ahead, Thank you please. very much. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair and the Honorable Members of the Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies, and the Committee on Trade, Commerce and Entrepreneurship, uh, good morning. The Commission would like to thank the Honorable Senate Committees for their invitation to participate in today's public hearing on the proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act and for the opportunity to provide information in support of the proposed legislation. The Commission strongly supports the proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act, which, if passed, will strengthen the Commission's core mandate of investor protection, as well as the financial consumer protection mandates of the other financial regulators. Indeed, investment scams or the unauthorized and unlicensed investment taking activities that defraud the public are a serious threat, not only to the economy, but to the financial well being of our Kababayans, depriving innocent people of their hard earned savings, ruining lives and relationships, and spawning distrust for the financial system as a whole. In the past, the 100 billion peso multinational telecoms investors. Uh, investment scam of Rosario Balajay in the 1980s and in the 2000s, the 30 billion peso legacy group scam of Celso de los Angeles in 2009, the 12 billion peso a month futures trading scam of Manuel Amalillo in 2012, the 12 billion peso performance investment products corporation scam of Michael Liu in 2007, and the 8 billion peso Rigen marketing scam of King Paul Bryan in 2019 were among the biggest investment scams to adversely affect the public and the Philippine economy. Unfortunately, efforts by con artists to perpetrate these investment scams have only increased as both the economy and individual savings have grown in recent years. The records of the Commission show that from 2017 to 2021, 493 complaints against investment scammers were filed, the pro most prominent of which were the complaints against Kappa Community Ministry in 2018 
which allegedly received an estimated 50 billion pesos from roughly 5 million victims. Pursuant to its mandate to protect investors and promote and maintain the integrity of the capital markets, the Commission has continuously assisted victims of investment scams by conducting investigations, filing the appropriate actions, and prosecuting the same. Hence, during the ongoing pandemic, or from 2020 to 2021, the Commission issued 241 advisories, 20 cease and desist orders, and, four, and 14 orders of revocation of certificates of registration against investment scammers. However, among the serious challenges that the Commission has encountered in the prosecution of criminal cases against these scammers is the lack or even absence of complainants who are willing to stand as witnesses in these cases. We believe that this is because, unlike the US SEC, which has the express authority to compel the return of funds obtained by violators of securities laws as part of their enforcement actions, our securities regulation code does not provide for a similar authority for your commission. Hence, victims of investment scams are almost always left on their own when it comes to recovering the amounts defrauded from them. They have to file their own cases, a staff of cases in court to recover their money. Thus, we fully support the provisions of the proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act, which allow the commission to file cases for recovery of funds for and on behalf of the victims of investment scams or to issue the necessary orders directing scammers to refund the investments of their victims. Further, the proposed legislation also provides for the supervision and regulation of investment advisors by the commission. This provision provides an additional layer of investor protection by ensuring that only qualified and licensed persons may provide investment advisory services for a fee or for compensation, while also eliminating the observed modus of scammers posing as so-called investment gurus. This also corrects a historical anomaly wherein the Philippines adopted its own version of the U.S. Investment Company Act 1940. This is currently RA number 2629 or the Investment Company Act, but did not adopt the Complementary U.S. Investment Advisors Act, also of 1940. Consequently, the Commission also supports the provisions of the proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act, which empowers relevant regulators to adjudicate actions arising from, connected with, or related to financial transactions that are civil in nature. The foregoing and other provisions of the proposed legislation will help to ensure true financial inclusion and fair dealing for all Filipinos, and will no doubt hasten the recovery from the pandemic by individual citizens and the economy as a whole. In the light of the foregoing, the Securities and Exchange Commission reiterates its strong support for the Senate and for the immediate passage of the Financial Consumer Protection Act. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Amako. Um, maybe I, I, I've been notified that the Insurance Commission, as well as the Cooperatives Development Authority, would also like to give a statement. May I request that it be made a short manifestation because we need to continue with our line of questioning, which is actually the meat of this hearing, uh, to clarify this uh, proposed bill. Um, may we ask now the Insurance Commission representative? You have an opening. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Honorable Senator Grace O, honorable members of the committee, representatives from the public and private sectors, guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The Insurance Commission has always championed the interest of policyholders of insurance, pre need, and HMO industries, and is committed to uphold fair and inclusive business practices that safeguard the hard-earned money of these customers. This is the reason why the Insurance Commission has continually supported the agenda of the Financial Sector Forum on consumer centricity. That is, providing focus on activities 
that put customer at the center of the regulation of any financial business activity. Accordingly, the IC, together with the other financial regulators under the FSF and the CBA, expresses its support and endorsement of the passage of the proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act. The passage of the Financial Consumer Protection Bill will, not, will without any doubt, provide impetus for financial regulators like the IC to use it as one of the basis in developing and implementing updated regulation for the protection of policyholders. This is because for the IC, very little is written about consumer protection in the insurance code or the printed code. On the other hand, the IC relies only on Executive Order 192 issued on November 2015 as the basis for HMO regulation on consumer protection, as there is no law that covers HMOs. Today, as we face even more challenging times, as COVID-19 pandemic changes the way we do business, as digitization and cybersecurity become a major priority of various businesses, as climate change affects pricing of insurance products and profits of insurance companies, and as Islamic finance products become a focus to expand financial inclusion locally, the enactment of the proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act will be a welcome development, not only for the regulators and the regulated companies, but also for the general public whom we serve. When consumer protection becomes a pillar in a company's business activity, the IC believes that more suitable products, programs, and business practices will be developed, which hopefully will lead to higher customer satisfaction. Studies have shown that customer satisfaction has a positive effect on an organization's profitability. According to Hoyer and McLean's in 2001, Satisfied customers form the foundation of any successful business as customer satisfaction leads to repeat purchase, brand loyalty, and positive word of mouth. In an article on customer satisfaction models, Ronald Van Haften listed Caldwell's 2000 summary of the findings of over 20,000 customer surveys, con surveys conducted by InfoQuest from 40 countries as follows. Number one, a totally satisfied customer contributes 2.6 times as much revenue to a company as a somewhat satisfied customer. A totally satisfied customer contributes 17 times as much revenue as a somewhat dissatisfied customer. A totally dissatisfied customer decreases revenue at a rate equal to 1.8 times what a totally satisfied customer contributes to a business. In the same article, Van Haften quoted Zyri in 2000 and said that numerous studies uh, that have- Sir, can, can, can you um, wrap up your uh, opening statement, please? Yes, madam. The trust given by co consumers to companies should therefore not be taken for granted. This trust needs to be consistently earned and nurtured to create stability and real growth in the financial industry. The passage of the proposed Financial Consumer Protection Act will greatly contribute to enhancing customers' trust and sustaining market stability and growth. The IC also sees the enactment of the Financial Consumer Protection Bill not only as an added security for consumers, but also a positive challenge for business to upgrade their internal policies and market conduct practices to address the present and emerging risks on fintech, insurtech, climate risks, pandemics, and market volatility. Rest assured that the Commission will play its part in protecting the welfare of the consumers and stakeholders. Finally, the IC, together with the BST, the SEC, the PDIC, and the CDA, reiterates support and endorsement of the enactment of the Financial Consumer Protection Act as we look forward to the development and institutionalization of consumer centricity in the financial markets. Thank you very much, Your Honor.
Thank you, sir. May we ask now the Cooperatives Development Authority for their opening. Please uh, keep it brief so that we can continue with our questioning. Thank you. Dagang salamat, Madam Senator Grace Po. Good morning to everybody. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. The Cooperative Development Authority would like to express its gratitude for allowing the authority to express its position on this very important and proposed legislation. At the outset, the Cooperative Development Authority expresses its full support for the passage of the proposed measure. We share the aspiration of the declared policy of the proposed legislation that it is to ensure that appropriate mechanisms are in place to protect the interest of financial consumers under the conditions of transparency, fair and sound market conduct, and fair, reasonable, and effective handling of financial consumer disputes, which are aligned with the global best practices. The proposed legislation is seen to bring confidence to the members of the cooperatives and to every individual who wants to join the cooperatives. Um, it will also ensure the safe and sound operations of credit cooperatives through the establishment of an effective regulatory and supervisory environment. Cooperatives with savings and credit services have established themselves to be effective vehicles in the improvement of social and economic conditions of their members by providing their members access to financial services, including savings. Cooperatives have encouraged thrift and open opportunities to the poor by providing great access to quality financial products and services Cooperatives with savings and credit activities can greatly contribute to the improvement of the lives and welfare of their constituents. It is for this reason that measures be put in place in order to protect the investments and savings of their members and every individual who wants to join these cooperatives. As one of the identified financial regulators in the proposed measures, the same is in line with CDA's mandate under its new charter, Republic Act 11364, or the CDA Charter of 2019, which is an act reorganizing and strengthening the Cooperative Development Authority, repealing for the purpose Republic Act 6939, creating the Cooperative Development Authority. The CDA was created to implement the provisions of Republic Act 9520, or the Philippine Cooperative Code of 2009, and to see to it that cooperatives be properly organized and managed. Under this charter, the CDA is granted the adjudicatory power and strengthened regulatory powers. With this, CDA vows to continuously uphold its trusts as it has always been and will continue to be its mandate to adhere to the declared policy of the state to foster the creation and growth of the cooperatives as practical vehicles for promoting self-reliance and harnessing people power towards the attainment of economic development and social justice. We, we reiterate our full support of this legislation measure as we view it is a mechanism to protect the interests of financial consumers, thereby upholding fair market practices and stability of the entire financial sector. In the end, this will result to stronger, viable, and sustainable cooperatives with higher degree of public trust and confidence. Dagang salamat, Madam Senator. Mayong buntag ka na itong tanan. Magandang umaga din sa iyo at maraming salamat, Asek Villanueva. Um, I'm not sure if I, if you're aware, but the IC and the CAD are not given adjudicatory powers in this bill. Um, may I ask uh, to the BSP, May we know what is the reason why the adjudic uh, adjudicatory power of financial sure, regulators sure. is seemingly limited to the BSP and the SEC only under Section 6F of the House Bill? Um, okay, may I call on Attorney Charina de Vera Yap to answer yes, the question? Go ahead, please. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to explain, uh, the provision does not include um, SIC and CDA because currently they have under their respective charters those adjudicatory powers. So um, 
we opted not to include anymore the those powers of CDA and I and IC. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's already in your adjudicatory powers. Um, yes, that's yes. why it wasn't included here. Okay, um, but can I ask uh, Asset William Weber? Since you already have your adjudicatory powers, uh, what is the other uh, advantage? What are the other advantages of this bill for you, for the CDA as well as the IC? May, may I ask? Um, IC uh, representative, uh, Mr. Florendo. Uh, let's ask Mr. Florendo first. You already have adjudicatory powers, am I correct? That's correct, Your Honor. So what's the advantage of this bill? Um, Senator, um, the, the bill has provided um, certain provisions more on consumer protection that def defined um, issues that uh, the IEC faced in the past. This includes among others, the power to choose, um, for example, or the authority to, to collect data and to audit um, uh, complaints and, and filings in, in, in any company. So the, the, the bill actually, um, as mentioned earlier by the BSP governor, provided certain authorities um, to us regulators that would further enhance consumer protection. Yes, thank you. I, yeah, that was the answer I was also seeking. There are other advantages, particularly for consumer protection. Um, not just um, not just in widening or increasing the powers of the regulators. Thank you. How about uh, Asset Villanueva? Thank you, Madam Senator. This bill will also um, increase the confidence of the consumer members of cooperatives, Madam Senator. So we are very happy to... Um, so complement with other regulatory agency, Madam Senator. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, may, may I go to another issue here? And I think uh, ito yung mas malapit sa, sa uh, inanail ng ating mga kababayan. Uh, last December, uh, there was a huge hacking incident within BDO system wherein at least 700 online accounts were compromised. Uh, we know that the B BSP uh, and the NPC are currently investigating the matter, but so far, can you share with us your findings? Ano na ang pananagutan ng banko dito? Uh, kung yung mga depositors na naapektuhan, were they given back uh, their money in the meantime that the investigation is ongoing? May we ask the BSP first? Thank, thank you, Your Honor. May I call on uh, Mel Plabasan to answer your question, Your yeah. Honor? Yes, 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 Governor. Good morning, uh, Senator Grace. Uh, the, the investigation is still ongoing right now, but uh, a number of the 700 involved accounts have already been restituted by, by the concerned bank. And we hope to be able to come up with, um, with the results of our investigation within the... Okay. Um, in the meantime, can you share with us what may have happened uh, based on your preliminary findings? Um, Senator Medjo, at this point, it's too early to tell kasi, kasi uh, admittedly, the, 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 the incident is quite, uh, it's, it's quite complex. Eh? It's really, it, really, it would really require yung cyber forensic investigation. So uh, uh, unfortunately, at this point, we cannot, uh, disclose yet with certainty what really went wrong. But hopefully by the end of this month, we will come up with something and we will submit to the monetary board already. Okay. Um, may I ask also which uh, lead agency is conducting the investigation? Is it the NBI Cyber Group or uh, does the BSP have their own yeah. uh, investigator? The BSP is conducting its own investigation. I think that the investigation is really for in relation to our supervisory and regulatory power, Madam Chair. But NBI, on the other hand, is also conducting an investigation for purposes of prosecuting if there are people that need to be prosecuted. That's uh, within the purview of NBI. But are you coordinating? 
Yes, Madam Senator, we with are the NBI. with NBI and uh, the the two institutions that were involved in that in that particular incident. See, uh, the reason why this is such a concern is that, um, unfortunately, this may be uh, one of many that will happen eventually. So there has to really be some sort of a game plan of the government that if something like this happens, that immediately we have the resources and the capability to track it as soon as possible. Now, um, is there an, an encompassing cyber group that's under the BSP that will immediately have the capability to act on situations like this, for example, um, a hacking that uh, yeah. happened? Yeah. Uh, Madam, for your information, Madam Chair, uh, we have a dedicated group in the BSP called the uh, Cybersecurity Oversight and Surveillance Group. That's primarily the, the, the mandate of the, the group. And we are constantly, uh, I mean, we are, again, similar to other government agencies, we are also, we are constantly building our capability you know, in terms of tools. Okay. Sir, who's, who's heading the cybersecurity group of the BSP? Uh, ako, Madam. Um, how many members do you have or how many employees do you have designated uh, primarily for this? Um, for, for, for the Cybersecurity Oversight and Surveillance Group, there are uh, 25 plantilla positions available right now. But within the, I think within the first, Within the first or second half of this year, we, ex we are expected to complete our reorganization that will result in uh, additional uh, manpower complement for this group. So total right now you have 20 or you're planning to expand to 20? Um, no, total, the, uh, the available plantilla positions right now are 25, 25 but it may increase to, I, I'm not so sure, but it, it, it will definitely increase by by first or by mid of by the first or second quarter of this year. No, no, no. Okay, I'm not clear. Sabi niyo po, 25 yung available plantilla positions, but how many are actually on it now working? In terms of the warm bodies, uh, I, I, I'll check, Madam Chair, but I think we're, I think 15 to 18 right now, but I have to check because okay. we are we are in the process of hiring, pa din. Okay, um, Governor Doc, no? uh, you're planning to expand your cyber group, security group in the BSP? Yes, yes, definitely, uh, Your Honor. Um, th th I think that's really important that would be the, imagine, no? from a certain number of, uh, how many percent did we increase from 2019? Um, let's see, the number of, 29% were banked in 2019. And now we're hitting 70% for 2023. Ang laki nun, di ba? And, and majority of that will really be online transactions or e-money accounts. So I think the cybersecurity group in the BSP should uh, likewise also expand uh, in keeping up with the yeah. expansion of the bank uh, online uh transactions that we're going to be having. Yeah. But, but right. in addition, um, Your Honor, the uh, BSP supervised institution should also beef up their own uh, cybersecurity uh, capability. Um, thank you. Governor Jokno, it has also come to my attention that after this uh, December incident uh, with these two banks, we're in at least 700 online accounts were compromised. Supposedly, the banks or one of the banks issued another disclaimer in their account application that they will no longer be liable for any fraud, uh, whether it is uh, caused by the account holder or not the fault of the account holder. Is that correct? Is that even... Uh, uh, would you like to answer that? I so go ahead. Uh, could I call on uh, Managing Director Karan, Your Honor? Yes, Madam. Yes, totoo ba yun na sinasabi yung isang banko ngayon, pag nag-open ka ng account o pinalitan nila yung terms and conditions nila, 
na kahit hindi kasalanan ng depositor, answer, just answer the question. Um, yes, hindi yes, nila. Yes, I'm sorry. Was, hindi, yes, Paul. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, there was a report on that provision being, put, uh, being uh, included in the terms and conditions of the banks. And uh, the attention of this bank was already called. And uh, we are, uh, I think we have issued a memorandum that, uh, that such is no longer allowed because uh, the protection of the consumer should be pr uh, prioritized. Exactly. I mean, it's sad what they think they can get away with if they're not called upon to explain or to desist from implementing such a policy. So can you please give me a copy, attorney, of that memorandum or that letter that you sent to this uh, bank uh, telling them that this is not allowed so that if there's any redress from our uh, depositors and they call our office, we can refer them to that memorandum. Do you have that? Uh, uh, we can provide you, Madam Senator, of the copy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, let's see. Do we have any other questions from, from our, the senators present here today? Um, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Karen Roa. Um, are, are you present here in our hearing? Yes, Senator. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Um, Ms. Roa, can you, can you tell us your views on this uh, bill? Are you supportive of this? Do you think it will be helpful? Um, Madam Chair, we are, uh, I represent the uh, Philippine Investment Fund Association, and we are currently reviewing this in light of um, all the current events that are happening. Thank you. Yes. Um, actually, uh, Ms. Roa is really uh, an expert in this, and I, I also um, respect her opinion and judgment. So, yes, um, may we ask for your position paper on this bill? We, we plan, by the way, we plan to sponsor this as soon as possible, so maybe by next week. So if, you, if we can have it by the end of the week, uh, we would appreciate that. Just we short. Will into that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Um, are there any, uh, Senator Sherwin, would you like to add anything else? Madam Chair. I, I just have a few questions and... Uh, this is in light with um, what happened to me last year, no? and I wanted to uh, understand the process of uh, BSP. I would like to ask BSP, um, obviously right now, uh, uh, criminals who intend to uh, heist a bank uh, will not use the normal entrance door and go into the bank and pull up a gun. Everything now is done cyber through uh, cyber and digital. And uh, I would like to ask uh, BSP, uh, is there any regular uh, audit that BSP is doing in so far as making sure that banks are uh, implementing uh, some form of cyber security audit uh, implementing uh, policies and uh, and uh, programs that will prevent cyber fraud from happening. May I call on Director Pabasan to answer yeah. that question? Yeah, to, to answer Senator Gachalian's question, yeah. First, of course, we have a what we call a dynamic policy framework on, on cyber resilience. So that's the, the, the standards being established or be that, that, that our banks are required to adhere to. So, and of course, we have, um, of course, on-site and off-site supervision program. So it's not only, uh, I mean, periodic on-site examination, but we have also ongoing off-site supervision of these institutions to ensure that they are, they are compliant with our standard, standards on cybersecurity. So there is a um, minimum standards for cybersecurity that banks should follow. Yes, meron po. It, 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 these are comprehensively covered in our circulars, in our memorandum, and even 
even in the, the manual of regulations for banks. And how often do you uh, assure the public that these standards are being followed? Uh, of course, not, uh, as mentioned, Senator, there is on-site and off-site supervision. And let's say if some standards are not followed, of course, there are enforcement. Do uh, you have enforcement framework? Naman, eh? So we can, we can impose monetary or non-monetary sanctions for those banks or other financial institutions that are not uh, complying with the cybersecurity standards being espoused by the BSP. But how often do you... Uh, to you uh, audit or enforce those uh, standards because those um, standards will be total if banks will not implement them or no one is mm -hmm. auditing them uh, how often do you do you check the standards uh, yeah. that you are that you are implementing as as mentioned earlier uh, senator sherwin as uh, senator gachalian so uh, we have, of course, uh, we have uh, several mechanisms uh, available. Like, of course, we have on-site examination. That's uh, that's why I, I didn't know. But how often? Yeah, my question is how the, often do you do the the, the regular examination is done once uh, once uh, once a year. But we have what we call ongoing off-site supervision. So when we say ongoing off-site supervision, may ongoing monitoring of the cybersecurity standards being uh, uh, adopted by the bank. So we just don't rely on the once a year of uh, on-site supervision. There are mechanisms for off-site uh, surveillance and off-site supervision. At least once a year, uh, BSV, your, your team, I, I would assume it's your team, you would go to the bank and uh, check if those standards, minimum standards, are being followed. Yes. Is that uh, correct? Yes, yes. How often do you update the standards itself? Because hackers are becoming very sophisticated. And we uh, all know that technology is also becoming uh, complex. You know? And these technologies are now available off the rack to yeah. hackers and to fraudsters. So how often do you... How often do you uh, uh, update your standards? Yeah, technology risk uh, regulation, I think, is one of the most dynamic regulations uh, in the BSP. I think if, if there is a need to update, we will update so far. Since its issuance back in 2018, we have already issued uh, several amendments to, to take into account you know, the, the evolving um, cyber threat landscape, landscape and even yung best practices. So if there are best practices that need to be incorporated, we will definitely consider that in the amendment of our rules. But how often do you change that? Is there a periodic uh, updating? Uh, Actually, as mentioned sorry. earlier, it's really not periodic. It's as the need arises. As soon as we get hold, let's say, of the latest standards, or as soon as, let's say, there are information available to us, let's say, from our off-site supervision or from the results of our on-site examination, then we will, we will issue the necessary amendment. So there's really no, no, no timeline as the need arises. Is off-site supervision and on-site off-site supervision slash audit is conducted by BSP, by your team? Yeah, it's conducted by BSP and we are composed of uh, cybersecurity, information security specialists and even have ethical hackers. We have recently employed some ethical hackers and we are, uh, we are still hiring more. So you have 25 people, 25 people covers the entire banking industry from commercial, universal bank, commercial banks, all the way to rural banks. And we cannot discount rural banks because in the quest to uh, move into the digital payment uh, world, uh, we should encourage even the most, uh, uh, even the most uh, simplest banks. So, do you, do you, with 25 people, you conduct standards audit on site, off site to all of these banks once a year? We have a new, sir. We have what we called a risk profiling methodology. Of course, we identify the, we, based on our risk-based supervision, we identify the, those that, those institutions, of course, let's say for rural banks, we cannot 
some of them have very simple IT profiles, so we don't we don't regularly audit sa kanila. It's really more of offsite supervision. But for those that are that have a complex IT profile, then we will uh, we, we conduct normally once a year uh, on site on site uh, examination. And as mentioned by the governor earlier, that's why we are also expanding. It's really because some of the rural banks and even the trip banks have already evolved and have become, have also now not just simple, but moderate or complex IT profile. That's why we also need to take into account all of this uh, in our uh, forthcoming reorganization. Well, the, the reason why I ask that, uh, Director, is uh, I always believe in this particular case, we have to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, we all know that uh, it, it's not, not only happening in the Philippines, but the whole world. Uh, uh, hackers and fraudsters becoming very uh, sophisticated. And if we don't uh, stay ahead of the curve, and no one is mandating to stay ahead of the curve, we will see uh, uh, cases like what happened in DDO last year. So I'm trying to understand the proactive uh, approach of BSP and what are the periodic uh, uh, audits or standards audit that BSP is doing so that we will prevent these things from happening. That, that's what I'm driving at. I'm trying yeah. to understand yeah. uh, the, per the, what, what the, uh, the prevention aspect uh, from the regulator. Yeah. Actually, again, as mentioned, aside from, of course, our dynamic policy framework, uh, we are also fortunate that our management it has been very supportive of our, let's say, um, initiatives, let's say, to, to adapt certain security tools. So we are also, because we, can, we, we, we need to build our capacity, not only in terms of manpower resources, but also in terms of, of tools. So a lot of them are also in the pipeline right now. So what, what happened uh, when I was uh, uh, when I experienced that uh, account take over? Obviously, my account was taken over, no? and uh, after that incident, we, we got a lot of emails from uh, from OFWs, from the domestic depositor, some as big as million, some as small as just ten thousand, twenty thousand. But regardless of the amount, it's really confidential. Eh? You no know, confidence that uh, these things can happen to our uh, depositors. So what happened if, if uh, BSP is doing this type of um, yearly off-site, on-site audit, then what happened? How come uh, I myself and other depositors experienced this? And, and a good thing, no? um, uh, Union Bank was uh, quick to admit uh, the shortcomings and corrected uh, the mistake. But uh, again, it's confidence. Eh? It's confidence that uh, the regulator and the banks are doing, uh, are staying ahead of the curve to, yeah. this, to prevent this. So what happened to that in that particular case? And with the, after that case, can we confidently say that uh, uh, account takeovers uh, will not happen anymore because uh, Obviously, we had an experience, and uh, your standards should already take into account this experience. Yeah. So to, to answer the question, as mentioned by the governor earlier, it's not only the BSP who should invest in their in its cyber resilience capability. Financial institutions, not only cyber resilience, but also consumer assistance uh, mechanisms. Kaya lang, uh, Senator Win. Um, uh, when we say kasi security of accounts, it's uh, it's a shared responsibility. It's not only the banks. Eh. There are also consumers. Then we have we have seen in our in a lot of complaints filed to us that some of the consumers really uh, gave away their information, their one-time pin. So again, it's really a shared responsibility that will help us manage all of these cyber-related threats. So may mga responsibility po yung but the account takeover is actually not even cyber. No, somebody just pretended to be Senator Gachelian and uh, managed to get a hold of the uh, uh, cell phone number and then and, and, and uh, took over the account. No? basically. No? So my my point there is um, number one is how come we have how come we did not prevent that action if we have 
uh, these standards in place? And then number two, uh, are we assuring the public that will not happen anymore because it happened? Yeah. Kasi when, when we speak of, of cybersecurity naman, Senator Gatchalian, we, we cannot definitely reduce it to zero. Ang, 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 ang objective is to ensure that we can, we, we can maintain it at a, a manageable level na hindi din, as you mentioned, hindi din na, na, na erode yung trust in the, in the banking system. But then again, kasi nga, it's, it's wild banks and even the BSP are trying to stay ahead of the curve. Ang, admittedly, there are a lot of published reports that you can see that also fraudsters are also are also trying to 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 stay ahead of the curve so yun nga eh, we cannot we cannot uh, we cannot completely or reduce it to zero but as long as yun nga we, we are able to maintain it at a level na manageable and of course hindi naman din na nadedehado ang mga consumers that's that's also one of the ano, one of the objective kaya nga right now we no longer we no longer say cyber security it's also cyber resilient it's already the mindset now is cyber resilience once you it's it's no longer just ensuring that you can prevent it but you can identify you can um, you can address and you can ultimately you can recover from any cyber attack that's the that's the mantra that we are espousing, um, espousing among institutions. It's really being able to recover from cyber attacks. But lastly, uh, Director, where, uh, uh, with, 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 with uh, what happened no? uh, to me and to many of the consumers, uh, which part of the law uh, aims to address that, that, uh, that, that issue? Yeah, uh, which part of the law is is uh, uh, definitely there's a loophole, no? uh, and which part of the law can address that issue, cover the loophole, and improve the capacity of BSP? In so far as that 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 type of uh, fraud is concerned, yeah. there are of course there are several other initiatives which are not yet part of the law that we are trying to to implement in order to. Yung ano, to, in order to address yung what you, the main problem that you mentioned. But I think, again, one of the biggest advantages really is the adjudicatory power of the financial regulator. So that you, if there are complaints and really if the clients are, are not negligent, then the clients, need, I mean, we no longer have to, um, to go through the lengthy process of, uh, of yung bang claiming, etc. So that the or we don't have to go to the courts, the BSP on its own can adjudicate and uh, can decide in favor or against the, the customer. Yeah, but Director, I was hoping more on the prevention, eh? more on the proactive, uh, giving BSP more, pro more powers to do proactive uh, uh, programs or proactive yeah. uh, uh, methodologies. So for example, nga, be strict with standards, Audit, yeah. Uh, yeah. requiring banks to follow uh, certain minimum cybersecurity standards, things like yeah. this. Eh? Because in adjudication, it's na yan, eh. yeah. you know? And we're trying to uh, fix a problem already, but preventing a problem is, in my, in my opinion, is more important in this particular yeah. aspect. Yeah, uh, if, if I may learn, the BSP kasi or, or the Philippines has one of the most uh, comprehensive cybersecurity regulations. <laughs> So in, in our regulation, and na, it's, it's composed of people, process, technology, eh, what you need to implement in order for you to, to be able to, to prevent all of these cyber attacks. And then if you are not able to prevent, meron pang detect. If you are not able to detect, meron pang incident response. And ultimately, if mahaka, may, or, there are also mechanisms for you to, to be able to immediately recover from the, from the attack. So all of these are already... Uh, part of the uh, policy framework that the BSP is espousing concerning cybersecurity or cyber resilience. Well, uh, thank you for that answer. And lastly, before I terminate, it's just a uh, um, basic question as a financial consumer, paano nangyari yun? Now, if we have all of these things, paano nangyari sa ating financial consumer? So, well, I, I can see that the law has a lot of powers, one of which it will be uh, market conduct, surveillance and examination, market monitoring, 
I think these powers are essential to be able for BSP to implement uh, preventive measures. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, thank you, Senator Gachalian. Uh, admittedly, um, it's all about the expertise also of the cybersecurity group. Uh, no amount of uh, law can actually be drafted if the people behind it are not experts. So one of the questions that we still have, actually, that was sent to us is that what are the qualifications of the people in the cybersecurity group of the BSP? And having asked that, there's also another factor here, not just the BSP or the regulators, but the banks itself. Uh, do we have a representative here from, let's say, BDO, uh, Union Bank, or any other financial institution? But let me ask first the BSP director, uh, Plabasan. Ano po yung kwalifikasyon ng mga nasa cybersecurity group ng BSP? And do they have continuing education? And are they given uh, updates of recent threats? Kasi... Uh, we know that technology is rather fast. So how are they able to keep up? What are their qualifications? Can you give me an example of some of the uh, employees that you have? What are their qualifications? Yeah. As mentioned earlier, uh, Senator Grace, uh, of course, track record, experience, global certification. So yung iba, they possess two or more global certifications on information security, cybersecurity. We okay, when you say global uh what did you say? Global certification. Certification. What certification? What particular global certification? I'm not aware. Yeah, yeah. I'm certified ethical hacker. Uh, CII, CISSP certified information security professional. So those are, kumbaga, those are global certifications that would that would somehow assure na na competent yung yung iha hire namin. So of course experience as, as mentioned earlier yung yung capacity building uh, the, the our, sen our senior management has also been very supportive of our training programs even now na na pandemic we have continuous mga online training programs we also have what we call we also have subscription to threat intelligence platform so we are continuously being updated of the recent threats that may affect the financial services industry we have collaboration with other central banks regarding the threats na pwede nilang i-share sa amin so we have all of those mechanisms and i think for the banking industry i think they they more or less they also follow the same but they also adopt the same qualification standards, I think. For okay, let me ask now, um, do we have a representative from other financial uh, providers? For example, um, maybe BDO or Union Bank or BPI, anybody? Okay, how about organizations that represent these uh, financial institutions? Madam, Madam Chair, uh, Ben Castilla from the Bankers Association. Uh, yes, please. Uh, your question, um, the, the question you're pursuing, the same uh, question that was answered by uh, Mel Plabasan by the Banco Central, uh, very much like uh, the requirements that the Banco Central uh, considers in uh, acquiring the services of cybersecurity professionals. Ganun din po yung mga banko. Uh, and uh, admittedly, uh, uh, some maybe five years ago, we had a big shortage of such professionals in the country. But uh, banking institutions, the various associations, the banks, and the Banco Central have really uh, stepped on the uh, pedal in accelerating training and uh, capacity building for our cybersecurity professional. However, we must caution uh, uh, as we in the industry uh, work hard, very aggressively in building our cybersecurity uh, capabilities, the other side are likewise doing so. Uh, and very often they have. Uh, Accesses to overseas resources, which uh, most of the banks in the Philippines would not have. Uh, that's why uh, 
Mel uh, mentioned cyber threat uh, monitoring platform, uh, which we all collaborate on uh, together with the Banco Central so that we can see what's happening in the rest of the world and get the Philippine banks ready uh, with whatever is coming our shore. Thank you, for, uh, Madam Senator. Okay, may, may I also ask uh, the PSE uh, if you have any cybersecurity group and then later on also the Chamber of Thrift Banks. Um, PSE? Yes, good morning, Madam Senator. Uh, yes, the uh, PSE, we have a dedicated uh, IT group that focuses on, you know, uh, the cybersecurity and protection of our trading platforms and our uh, front-end engines. Uh, uh, so we're always looking into that and we all, and we're also uh, required to undergo a third-party uh, review of our IT systems at least once every two years. But Madam Chair, may I, now that uh, I've been recognized, may I just make a brief statement on the on the proposed bill, Madam Chair. Yes, please go ahead. Keep it brief. Thank you, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, Madam Chair and members of the uh, Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies, and the Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship uh, Committee, the Philippine Stock Exchange supports the passage of the Financial Consumer Protection Act. We share the vision of the authors of having a comprehensive and robust financial consumer protection framework, which sets out clear rules of conduct for financial service providers and gives regulators strength and powers to address new risk posed by the use of digital innovations in the delivery of financial products or services to financial consumers. We believe that the passage of the Financial Consumer Protection Act is a necessary and timely initiative to increase consumer confidence in the Philippine financial markets and ensure financial integrity. However, we would like to provide the following comments and raise a few points for clarification, which we hope will be of valuable use to the Honorable Committee in refining the provisions of the bill. First, the definition of financial products or services is broad in that it covers all financial products or services developed or marketed by financial service providers and mentions investments by way of illustration. Financial service providers are in turn defined as natural or juridical persons which provide financial products or services that are under the jurisdiction of the BSP, SEC, IC, and to a certain extent, the CDA. We suggest, first of all, that the term financial products or services include the term securities as defined under the Public Act 8799, otherwise known as the Securities Regulation Code. Second, we, uh, we also note that in today's securities market, there is a proliferation of cryptocurrencies, digital assets, investment contracts, and other schemes that may result in unsuspecting investors being defrauded or misled via social media, text messaging, and other means of communication. While HB 6768 provides that the term financial product or service also includes the digital financial products or services, which pertain to the broad range of financial services accessed and delivered through digital channels, we believe that we, or we, we suggest that there be a better clarification of uh, whether digital assets are considered securities requiring compliance with the Securities Regulation Code and the proposed FCPA. We believe the FCP, this particular act can provide a clearer definition of what financial products are covered by the proposed law, and this will go a long way in protecting the interests of the investing public. Second, in bills define investment advisors. But we note that the bills do not expressly state prohibited transactions by investment advisors and make the same unlawful. This, we note that the United States statute on the regulation of investment advisors, namely the Inv Investment Advisors Act of uh, 191040, 
expressly provides the prohibited transactions by investment advisors in the law itself for implementation by the regulator. And we suggest the same be included in this particular bill. On, on claims which fall under the adjudicatory powers of the SEC, the 100,000 peso threshold appears to be too low considering the scale of investment scams perpetrated in recent years, like the Amman futures or the Kappa investments. Finally, as a matter of clarification, uh, we would like to clarify if exchanges are considered financial service providers under this act. As market operators, exchanges do not develop or market the financial products listed and traded on the exchange, but merely provide a platform for trading of securities. Assuming exchanges are covered, they should not and cannot be held responsible for losses sustained by investors from investments in securities listed and traded in the exchange. Unless, of course, the exchange was guilty of bad faith or gross negligence amounting to fraud. Exchanges operate under a full disclosure-based regime where the exchanges make sure that all material information are available to investors, but leaves it to the investors to decide whether to buy, hold, or sell securities on the basis of the available information. That's all, Madam Chairman. We'll be sending the committee our full statement. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. Thank you, actually, that is quite helpful, um, very detailed. So I would like, uh, when you submit that, we will furnish the BSP a copy uh, of your submission and uh, wait for their comments with regards to this. Because yes, as you've mentioned, uh, uh, if exchanges are covered, obviously losses should not be included unless it was done fraudulently that caused it a fraudulent activity. Uh, with regards to the threshold, um, if you think it's too low, but of course, uh, if we include the concerns of our consumers, um, even 5,000, 10,000 is a big amount for them. So we have to be able to figure out uh, a, a just uh, threshold that will provide the, the best protection for our consumers. Um, what financial products are exactly included, and then include securities in financial um, services. So I would also like to get the comment of the BSP uh, after they read your submission. Um, yes. may, may, may I ask now the, the Chamber of uh, Thrift Banks, uh, your representative, if you have um, any comments with regards to this bill and also, um, I know that you regularly meet with your stakeholders as well as uh, uh, those that run the, the thrift banks all over the country. And as I know that the thrift banks are already expanding their services, are you also advocating that thrift banks have their own cybersecurity uh, group within their uh, business framework? Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Senator Po. Um, Mr. San Pedro is also with me, but I, I, I'm not sure if uh, his video is on. So, uh, well, definitely, uh, Madam Senator, uh, thrift banks, just like the other players in the industry, treat this matter with, uh, with, with, uh, with, 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 with importance because we've always viewed data breaches as a uh, it, uh, as something that will really hurt the banks no? because this will also lead to reputational risk. So in terms of your, your question earlier was uh, what I mean, the personnel that the thrift banks also hire for uh, cybersecurity, well, definitely this is um, uh, of, of, uh, of importance when, when hiring. And uh, we are aligned as well with the minimum requirements set by the central bank. We also collaborate closely with the rest of the banking industry, uh, BSP, BAP, and other industry players, uh, especially in cases of uh, cyber possible cyber threats. 
and ensure that the banks are updated in terms of cyber cybersecurity uh, uh, updates. We uh, collaborate also with uh, also with the BAP, no, and BSP, uh, in providing the necessary uh, training for uh, for bank for our banks uh, personnel. In terms of this, we ensure that they are updated on on uh, the various forms of uh, cyber threats. And uh, yeah, we we we. Uh, we closely coordinate also with our members uh, on this, Madam uh, Madam Senator. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. Felix. Um, actually, that, that's a question I'd like to pose to the BSP. Um, do you have regular seminars um, for bank owners, uh, whether they're uh, big commercial banks or thrift banks? Um, and would it be appropriate to add in this bill that each financial institution should have a designated cybersecurity group to monitor uh, transactions and to keep their depositors uh, safe. Uh, maybe uh, Governor Jokno. That's a good suggestion. And I, I uh, we, we, we can't hear uh, the governor. Uh, while we're waiting for the governor, this is uh, what I would like to um, point out. As uh, Mr. Labasan mentioned, there are about uh, maybe 20 plantilla positions and they're going to expand. But clearly, the public sector need, needs the support of the private sector also. So I think that every bank that has an online capability should have uh, competent people running their online platform. So maybe the BSP um, working with our committee can add a provision here that all of uh, these private institutions that provide online transaction, banking transactions, should have a minimum uh, continuing education for their cybersecurity group so that they are in step with the times and, and also will be able to address if there are any threats. Um, would that be a possibility in minutes. this bill or will it just complicate this bill? No, I think right, the... right now, uh, Madam Senator, we're doing that. This, this problem of cyber resilience is not only uh, the responsibility of one institution, it is an all, gov all of government. In fact, it's all of society. That's why we have our own uh, cybersecurity group, but, but the individual banks are also, they have their own. And so they follow the regulations that we issue. And of course, we should remember that we have DICT, Department of Information and, and Communications Technology. So this is really an all of government approach. So, and so we continue to train people and we also continue to um, coordinate with regional and international banks also among, uh, among us, we, we coordinate. And so uh, it, it, there are 25 people that was mentioned by, by uh, Director Balbasan. That, that is really uh, a small group, but this is part of a, a, a bigger, bigger group, which is coordinated. And as, as he said, the, uh, the management, the, uh, we are committed to expand it we will we provide them the necessary technology and necessary training. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, maybe the Laban Consumer Group, Yusef Dimagiba, nakita ko kayo kanina dito. And then maybe, kung nandyan pa kayo? Wala na. Siguro si, ano na lang, Pira. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Hi, kamusta, kamusta na po? Kayo po, ganun, mabuti naman po kayo po. Meron po eh, akong wish, may wish po kami sa laban consumer. Sana po itong bill na to ay maging batas ngayong 18th Congress. Hindi po sa 19th, <laughs> this Congress po. Eh bakit po? Alam niyo po, ang isang feature ng bill will transform the Banco Central ng Pilipinas in the way 
they handle consumer complaints at the moment. Ang sa totoo lang po, I hope si Governor Jokno nandito pa. Ang haba-haba po na acknowledgement ng Financial Consumer Group ng BSP, pag may consumer complaints po kayo in-endorse. Ang haba-haba. Ang ganda-ganda, the way it's written. Pero sa dulo po, no, nasasabihin lang sa inyo ng Banko Sentral, e-endorse eh, po namin ng complaint nyo dito sa banko nito, X. Pag in-endorse na kay Bank X, matutulog na po yun doon. Kaya yung statistics ni Senator William, 20,000, eh baka po yung 20,000 yun eh, went through that process, no? Very passive. Very passive and the way complaints are being handled right now by the Banko Central. In fact, as I speak today, meron po lagi nagpapadala rito ng email for the past five days, copy po ko, a certain Mr. Paolo Strado, Strabo. Eh, talaga pong inis na inis na siya, reversal lang ng charges ng credit card na sa Union Bank, inabot na po ng tatlong buwan. No? Ganun po yung the way the way the Senate should, should really give extreme urgency to transform Banko Central ng Pilipinas and the banking industry in the way they resolve consumer complaints. Yun po importante doon eh. Hindi lang po basta ang haba-haba ng acknowledgement, parang compliance ng sa Ontario Health Authority. Pero pagdating doon sa substance, substantial portion of evaluating, handling, and deciding complaint, hindi po yan as a general rule gagawin ng Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. So, sana po, sa Senate, sa House naman, eh, approve na po yata ng third reading, yung House Bill 6768, eh, binasa ko po kahapon yan, halos pare-pareho naman po yung provisions, may commonality, yun lang po pakiusap ko on behalf of consumers na maging patas po ito, itong mga bills na ito, kasama na po yung bill nyo, uh, Chair, ito na po yung maging patas this 18th Congress with the support of Senator Gatchelian, Senator Marcos, Senator Angara, Senator Subiri, Senator Marcos, sila po yung mga nakita ko kaninang present. Ilamang ba? Maraming salamat sa pagkakataon bibigay niyo sa amin. Thank you. Good morning. Actually si um, former Yusek Di Magiba ay eh, talagang hindi na nagigiba. Kadal na niyang advocate ng mga consumers. Kaya uh, nagpapasalamat kami kasi hanggang ngayon ay talagang nagseserbisyo pa rin kayo. At naintindihan ko yung sinabi ninyo uh, pagka nag-complain, syempre talina ng kamay ng BSP. So ilalagay for uli dun sa banko. That's why With this bill, we will empower the BSP to resolve it. And of course, there are also penalties involved. Um, let's not forget that for the airing financial institution, there are disqualification or suspension of airing directors, officers, or employees. There um, are also fines uh, and the restriction of collection of any excessive fees or charges by the financial service provider. But the truth of the matter is, Um, when we talk about thresholds, ito yung, ito yung talagang heartbreaking. You know, for, for many of us in this hearing, maybe when we talk about 5,000 pesos, 10,000 pesos, we can sleep on it and say we can resolve it, you know, next week, the week after. But for some people, that's actually their means of survival for the coming weeks. That's why not to have that resolved right away. It's really a dilemma. And nobody's immune to this. Uh, even in my family, considering ah, ako pa yung head ng uh, banks and financial institutions sa Senate, problema ng, ng anak ko minsan makakuha ng, ano eh, ng credit for a fraudulent transaction or uh, not fraudulent but maybe uh, a, a, a transaction that He didn't authorize from an online uh, payment. So, kahit yun, imagine, nandito na ako sa Senado. Eh, Siyempre, I don't want to throw my weight around. So, he had to go through the, the usual process of filing a complaint. And it doesn't take, it takes weeks before he can get his credit. So, talagang problema ito. You know, in other countries, um, for example, you use your credit card. And you file for 
uh, a question, they will give you temporary credit for that amount. In short, they take the side of the consumer. They, they give you the benefit of the doubt. So maybe for a certain transaction, pag hindi naman repetitive yung nagiging problema ng account holder na yon, baka naman pwedeng bigyan ng, ng initial credit para meron silang panggastos. I don't know, okay? So this is something that uh, we will discuss further, but I appreciate uh, the feedback that we have. And, and I think I got a message from the representative of PIRA uh, that he wanted to give some sort of manifestation. PIRA? Nandiyan pa ba? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. We just uh, wanted to reiterate our support for the bill. And we make ourselves available for anything that uh, we may be used for, either as a resource or as a member of a TWG that may be created to flesh out the details of the bill. So uh, th that's it, Ms. Madam Chair. Thank you for your short manifestation. If there are no other questions, um, Okay, before I uh, adjourn uh, this hearing, I would like to point out the following submissions. First of all, from the PSA, uh, as I requested earlier, please submit your recommendations as soon as possible because uh, as Yusek Di Magiba said, sana itong 18th Congress, mapasa natin to. So I would like to sponsor this as soon as possible. Um, and then also for the other uh, Maybe in detail, I would like to get from uh, BSP, what are your programs for the cybersecurity uh, protection of our consumers? Uh, how are you keeping our uh, the financial providers abreast with the times when it comes to cybersecurity threats? I would also like to get in detail uh, from Mr. Plabasan, yung mga employees ninyo, kung ano yung qualifications nila. Uh, maybe not the names anymore, but um, ano yung mga natapos nila, IT, ganito, ganyan, di ba? Uh, just so we, we, we are confident with the people uh, running uh, the program. Now, before I end this, I would like, again, as my colleagues already have in advance, um, I would like, again, to congratulate um, Governor Jokno. Uh, this is an important award, not just for the governor himself, from the uh, by the banker, it's an international banking, finance, and uh, business um, organization. This is very important, this recognition of having the central banker, uh, central global central banker award of 2022, because it sends a signal to potential investors that we have a sound banking head uh, in the country. We have a sound uh, banking system. Uh, that our economic fundamentals are, are, are good considering uh, the threats and also the problems that have beset our country. So again, thank you and uh, congratulations to Governor Jokno and thank to all on. our resource persons here today. Uh, maraming salamat po. And of course, yung walang kapaguran at napakasipag na senador na hindi ko alam talagang lahat-lahat ng hearing sa binababara niya, pati yung mga sarili niyang mga, mga, mga hearing, uh, very detailed. So thank you also, uh, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, uh, for your presence. Uh, Nagka-COVID pa yan at lahat, pero pumasok pa rin. So congratulations and uh, thank you again to, to everyone present here today. This, you, this hearing is now adjourned. Thank you, Senator. Uh